Hi, I'm Jane M. Mason from Watching Paint Dry, LLC. In this mini demo, we're going to talk about color and color choices. Color can really affect the mood of your painting. And just because you always paint with the same colors on your palette does not mean you always have to use them in the same way. So I'm going to give you some suggestions about that. I'm actually here in Minnesota, and Minnesota has a lot of rainy days. So here's a little exercise I did, just drawing out my paper with um, nine squares and dividing them into mini paintings. If you can see this one, this is like a misty river or misty lake, and it's very, very foggy and lots of wet on wet. Here's another river or lake. This particular one, I've actually, after I put some paint down, most of these are done wet on wet, which means you wet the paper and you add really wet paint and it kind of runs all over. Sometimes I tip my paper here and there to help aid where the paint runs around. Sometimes it just moves on its own. Here you can see that I've taken a, either a fan brush or a sponge or a wad of paper towels and just diagonally run through the painting while it's still wet. It catches a little bit of the paint and pulls it down like uh, intense rain coming at an angle. So this was a fun painting to do, to just practice a lot of those uh, wet, cloudy, gray, atmospheric conditions and yet add a lot of color too. So I suggest trying one of these. You can do this with rainy days, with snowy days, with hot summer days, with spring days, whatever you have in mind. But it allows you to look at color in a different way. Here's another painting I'm going to show you about color. This is going to be a little tricky. I'm going to flip this over, so you're going to have to kind of memorize this side, and when I flip it over, you'll see the other side. But this uses two different color palettes. Notice that this is a blue-green here, blue-green, and the tree has a lot of yellow-green in it. And this is a scene, and you can see the reflection in the water down below, like this cliff, okay? If I turn it over, you can see that now that this is a different color, there's a lot of purple in here, a lot of orange and intense brown in here. It seems like it's a different season. The scene is exactly the same drawing, but by using different colors, it gives a very different mood. So I'm going to flip it over for you one more time. And you can see the difference in mood, much more pastel -y, and the other one much more intense. You can think, what is the mood that I want to convey? And you can decide your colors to match your mood. An exercise to practice on this is also taking just a little a piece of paper, a scrap piece of paper, and dividing it into squares. For example, this is the same drawing. It's a house with a sky with some kind of shrubs or trees out here and a lot of uh, foreground, which presumably is grass. But let's take, for example, this sky and this painting with this really intense red sky. When you look at this little painting, you're not thinking, how odd it has a red sky. What you're getting from this is a time of day and a particular mood. The same way when we look at this painting with the yellow sky, we're not saying, I, I, I can't imagine what that is, it has a yellow sky. We're saying, wow, that's intense light. So even when you're using imaginative colors, you can convey a lot of mood and atmosphere and energy by the color you pick. It does not have to be the actual color that you see. You're the artist and so you get to decide. So I hope you can use these exercises to think about your color choices and the mood that you're trying to convey in your painting. Thank you. I'm Jane M. Mason.